Hello, I'm back with another Giant April video. So Giant April is a reading event where a bunch of us are reading, watching and otherwise experiencing large monsters such as King Kong. Uh, and I've got co-host too, Annie from Obscure Book Adventures and Duncan from Back Away From The Donkey and they'll be making some great stuff and other folks are joining in as well. There's a playlist link down below. So today, talk quite a lot about King Kong. Time to look at another giant ape who bestrode the 1960s. Like a colossus. Like a very much like a colossus, Excellent. although maybe not as quite as a quite as colossal as you might wish. Uh, so I'm talking about Conga. Conga. Let's all do the Conga. Who was <sighs> sorry. I'm talking about Conga. So this was a film, came out in 60, 61, something like that, starring Michael Goff, Margot Johns. And yes, it's a giant ape film. So it's pretty much a sort of B-movie. It's British. And it was quite a big deal at the time. Partly, I think, because it was in colour. Um, but you know, it's now it's kind of widely ridiculed yeah so this is regularly shown on talking pictures tv where it's uh, viewed with fond fondness and a certain amount of certain amount of ridicule um but it's got things about it that are still pretty good so conga let me tell you the story there's a scientist guy dr decker played by michael goff who's a, a british actor with a fantastic fruity voice he later went on to be alfred batman's butler in the tim burton movies um so he's been marooned in the jungle but he comes back with a with a chimpanzee and uh he's basically saying he's made some great discoveries and he's alluding to these this great breakthrough that he's gonna make so so that happens he gets back home and he has an assistant played by Margot Johns, who's sort of, she's obviously wants their relationship to be more than just scientist and assistant. So, so that's a thing. And uh, he's explaining about these plants. Back. She's been carefully nurturing his original plants because he's a professor of botany at uh, somewhere called Essex College. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he sweeps them all to the ground and installs the new ones. Just to check, is that a college in Essex or is it Essex College, Oxbridge? It's, Shire, I think University. it's meant to be a, in Essex. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is before there was an Essex University. Yeah. Just. Um, although I'd have to say it's a pretty wild higher education institution, judging by the, <laughs> the way things way things turn uh, out. Um, popular entertainment and universities. <laughs> so he, he, he's back at work. He's starting the experiments, and uh, to cut a long story short, the the big breakthrough he's made made involves insectivorous, carnivorous plants, which are themselves giant big enough to swallow people which is a, a little callback i thought to uh, one of the more underrated universal horror movies werewolf of london which also involves man-eating plants in the whole creating monsters thing i think there's something really uncanny about that you know they, they're crossing the species barrier in a way <laughs> you don't really like uh anyway yes it turns out injecting the chimp with the serum he makes out of the plants makes it grow bigger and gives him ability to tell it what to do as well he's got some sort of mind control so he's getting more and more mad scientist and kind of this is good you know oh, this is i'm going to all kind of be super famous and powerful because of this uh, but they don't like it at essex college he has a, a tricky meeting with the dean Oh. Dean Foster, not to be confused with 
author Alan Dean Foster and basically he starts telling Conga to go on murder missions with this kind of <laughs> I can instruct you thing. So Conga at this time is pretty big but he's not like towering over buildings um, so he's showing up and kills the Dean and um, so there's all of that plus he teaches in a class, teaches botany. He meets some of the young students, uh, Sandra and Bob, who are the next, the next level down in the in the cast. Um, Sandra's like really keen on the science and and is really admiring Doctor Decker, which which annoys Bob. And then it turns out Doctor Decker, who's he's beginning to get to, to tire of more mature Mar Margaret at home and thinking of um, maybe he can bend Sandra to his will. So there's, a, there's another thing going on. The plot develops, more people, he gets, Conga kills Bob just as he's about to drive off on his Vespa. Um, Sandra comes to a sticky end as well. Uh, Margaret injects Conga with a uh, all the remaining serum which is why he suddenly starts growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and um that that basically everybody dies uh, including conga who is you see rampaging through london models of london and sort of back projection where he's over parades of shops and stuff like that and then and then gets killed by the army at the end um i think the it's hard not to see it as kind of ridiculous because the special effects are so clunky, particularly the man in a suit, gorilla, and things like, check this out and watch how Margaret turns from a, a real live person into a little doll and back again. <laughs> Okay. I still liked it, but for other things, I like it for Michael Goff's amazing demented performance and, and Margot John's performance too. Uh, and the sumptuous colour and the parades of shops in, I, I think it's meant to be, um, meant to be Essex. I think it's, it's made around Merton Studios. So this is like the England I grew up in. So, you know, that's lovely. Parades of shops are very specifically english mm. in the uk thing aren't they well that's kind of incongruous when you've been led yeah. to expect to an ape towering over the city and like knocking over build those sorts of buildings and you don't really see much of that um he does burst out of a house which is quite good but he's got a whole <laughs> thing's got a kind of a suburban vibe to it so you know i'd say it's yeah it's it's interesting because of that and a bit of a period piece but i was really disappointed as a kid i guess now i see other things in it turning to the book so there was a novelization simultaneously coming out conga by dean owen uh so uh published by monarch books who if you look at the rest of their line they're all called things like she wouldn't surrender King of the Harem Heaven, The Practice of Passion. Oh my God. Um, also, Go With God, A Treasury of Great Prayers of All Times. <laughs> Maybe I'm you pray for forgiveness about... after you've read the rest yeah, of them. I'm worrying about she wouldn't surrender. Well, the thing is, this book, yes, <laughs> it has the story of the film pretty much, a few odd little changes, but at every possible moment, i.e. every couple of pages, it has weird sex scenes inserted that aren't in the movie. So it's like it's turned the conga film into a sort of pulp soft, soft porn. So I was wondering, was there an earlier version of the script where that was the idea it'd be this super adult film? Although I'd have to say there's things in this book it would be very unlikely would happen. Uh, in any in any film of any rating uh, that you um, that you would get, and just give you a sample of the writing. Later, on the familiar bed with its rose-coloured spread, Decker possessed Margaret, 
with a violence that frightened her and at the same time aroused her to a frenzy of passion such as she had never known. His hands and mouth roved her naked perfumed no, flesh, no. stirring hidden fires within her and she clutched him to her, arching her body wantonly to take the savage spear of his long starved no! knees. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah. I'll never get those words out of my brain now. See what you've done. So it's pretty horrible. And apparently <laughs> it's more that uh, that's what Monarch books were like. So the cigar chomping editor of the Monarch books told Dean Owen, mean, just put, take that ape story and put some sex in all the time. Um, and th there was another adaptation the same publishers did of a, another similar movie called Reptilicus, uh, where they were actually sued for this for this practice. And disappointingly, I mean, the you could you can forget about Conga, the whole giant ape rampaging through London bit is reduced to two and a half pages. That's all you get of that sort of thing. So that's like uh, ugh, horrible. Turning with gratitude to the comic book Conga, <laughs> Conga also had a life throughout the 1960s, up until about 68, in comics. So, rewinding, remember the story, Dr. Decker in Africa comes back, makes this serum that makes the ape grow big. And... It's a much more benign adaptation. I think this is, Annie thought the same. If you watch um, Annie's video that I'll link to. Um, yeah, this is more like a children's comic. So here in the comic, Dr. Decker isn't evil. He's more like put upon and misguided, but the whole conga murdering people thing it happens because they invent an idea of mind transference so the serum makes conga telepathic mm. so when say dr decker's like oh that meeting with the dean that, that was annoying in the lab <laughs> it's like conga's like must kill dean <laughs> and then later it's dean, the old uh, father reach must <laughs> he can reach he can reach the key you know it's the key's been hung up too close so he unlocks it navigates across london on his own kills the dean and the that, that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uses jungle senses um and uh decker and margaret are married they, they are accidentally slain um and the two teens bob and sandra they survive. There's no, there's no love triangles. There's no icky, sexy stuff. There's no savage spears being, um, no wanton arching happening. Um, so, good lord for that. Conga still gets killed though. So I was wondering what happened in the other twenty-four issues. Here's what happens: Sandra and Bob remember they're like botany students in Essex College. Find a steel box with Doctor Decker's notes. So they recreate the serum and they make a new conga. So the conga of comics, who is in loads and loads of increasingly bonkers stories, is actually a sort of conga too. Fair enough. Um, and Sandra and Bob are in those a lot as well. They're the, they're the people conga loves the most. There's also a big move to Australia, which is apparently <laughs> um, Bob, this kind of the gormless rugby student in the movie suddenly announces he's got a job as head of the department of genetics at sydney university <laughs> and starts smoking a pipe <laughs> so they go the career progression from that's brilliant despite he... those mad field trips <laughs> have he even graduated at this time well you could just about imagine that this classroom of people sitting in rows and being told what this is what a fern is were actually like postdoctoral <laughs> researchers <laughs> um and this the, the, like i say the stories are great i particularly like an image there's a there's a thing they do in romance comics where you see a couple kissing and then in the background or watching them is another character who's like why is she, why is he not with me sort of crying because the the you know thing and then this it's that image but with conga as the, oh, the, the crying yeah. onlooker oh, oh fantastic conga. um so it all ends happily which is kind of good after the 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 the, the 
nightmare sexual dystopia of the novel. <laughs> okay, so that's the strange world of Conga. I mean, it's, it is interesting that there's three versions and they're all so different. Can I sing the conga tune now? Okay, so <laughs> to finish, we're going to have a musical finish, first of all with Dr Jenny and then with another film, another clip from the film. Hooray! Da 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 conga, da 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 conga, da 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 Music is what we all need and I've brought my radio. Oh, oh, my God. God. 